A uh, quick note on the uh, electrode cables. I've made an update here which I want to show you guys. Um, um, basically, before I had these uh, uh, leads, these, these are just alligator leads that I, I cut one of the heads off of one end, um, and they have very fine um, uh, stranded wires inside, very similar to the insides of the uh, the audio cable, like I showed you before, and uh, that that's both good and bad. The good thing is that that makes these cables very supple and flexible. Uh, the bad thing is that the there's just you know maybe a dozen very very fine strands of wire in there, which makes it very fragile. And I've gotten a couple of sort of random phosphine flashes, like, you know, maybe once a week. And uh, it seems to be when I'm turning my head. Plus, it, it works, it does that both in the uh, the finished box and also on the, the uh, breadboard version. So I'm, I'm sure it has to be in the electrode cable somewhere. So, uh, what I did here is, instead of just directly screwing the uh, those very fine almost human hair thin stranded wires into these posts um, what I've done is I, I've taken some 22 gauge copper wire and uh, uh, just I, I wrapped the you know I've left one end stripped about oh from about here all the way to here. That's all stripped. It's like a good two centimeters, or not quite two centimeters. And then this cable comes up to here. The, the insulation part comes up to here, and then the stripped part is wrapped around that um, the, the copper, exposed copper. And then the, the rest of the exposed copper is just kind of up against the, the the, the, the lead. And then I've taken this heat shrink tubing. There's two different sizes here, small and large. Taken the heat shrink tubing and just sort of uh, used it to, you know, hold that joint together, give it more mechanical strength. So I've done that with both the anode in red and the cathode in black. And then I took a much larger piece of the a heat shrink tubing and put it over the entire joint holding both of these together and then the other thing is that this this 22 gauge wire is very very uh, stiff compared to this stuff it's very stiff so this whole thing is very very sturdy now so there will no not be any intermittencies coming from there in the future now the other thing is the electrode connection I just have an alligator clip hooking on to that right now and that could be an issue that you know, if you turn your head, the alligator clip could could wiggle around. So, my next upgrade is going to be to improve the interface between this and the alligator clip. Well, as for the aforementioned intermittency or potential intermittency problems with this uh, little wire loop here, uh, interfacing with the alligator clips, Here's the solution. Ta da! An electrode with its own wire, or with its own alligator clip attached. So you can connect those two together very solidly. And the added advantage is uh, because this, um, this is actually uh, very supple, you can move this thing around back and forth. So you can slide those two. Um, what do you call it, covers, insulations together 
very close so that in this case this is the cath um, yeah the cathode which rests on my on my right shoulder um, with the wire loop solution occasionally you could get skin contact at this joint which is not I mean it doesn't interfere with the performance of the circuit it's just kind of annoying because you get a little itching sensation on you know where that contact happens which is more intense than the the electrode sponge pad so this gets rid of that problem uh, just by having insulation over the whole length and um, yeah so there you go problem solved yay All right, I said I would do a, uh, a demonstration <clears throat> of uh, the performance of the device with the electrodes in place so I'm just about to start my session right now and uh, you can see as I ramp up the 50k potentiometer it maxes out only at about half a milliamp I ramp up the rest of the way with the 5k pot and we get up just about 1.1 there's 1.2 now it is starting to creep up very very gradually here let me show you what happens when I that's when I move my arm <laughs> when I turn down the LED it actually creeps up a good tenth of a milliamp. So that just kind of speeds up the process. And uh, over the next <clears throat> probably five minutes or so, the needle is going to get up closer to probably 1.89, uh, maybe even all the way up to 2 milliamps. So I will time lapse the intervening time but I uh, put a clock here so that you can uh, see how long it takes and uh, by the way if I move my arm around where the uh, electrode is that's what causes this little movement here so I'm gonna turn over to my computer and uh, do a crossword puzzle I just turned up the uh, LED to sort of back off the, because uh, it was getting up close to 2, so I decided, well, let's back it off to about 1.8, and it'll probably still continue to climb a little bit for the next few minutes. a pretty good session for today so I'm gonna turn it off now and we're done finally uh, I know I said I uh, might give you a tour of uh, the uh, electronic shop here in Taipei where I bought a bunch of this stuff but I just haven't had time to get up there. It's it's a good 45 minutes round trip by bus, and um, you know uh, 
I actually, I, you know, since I don't have a need to actually buy anything up there, I haven't been up there lately, so I figured uh, just let's just get this last video added to the list, and uh, you know, in the future, uh, next time I have an actual need to go up there, uh, we'll shoot some video and uh, maybe have another video to to this playlist just for giggles. Uh, but for now. Uh, it's about time to wrap this up, so good luck everybody, and I hope you've uh, learned something from this series, and, uh, you know, see you next time.